What's up, SATA files and horror fans? In case you're not aware, Netflix just dropped a brand new horror series that centers on the Japanese horror franchise, Ju-On. It's called Ju-On The Origins. Now, much like its movies, this show focuses on overlapping narratives. There's an author, there's a young actress, there's a high school student, there's a pregnant wife, all of which are connected to the cursed home. Now joining me in this review is the editor-in-chief of Unreal Movie website and he also happens to be a huge horror fan, Armand de la Cruz. Welcome to the channel. Hi. Let's go and start off first with your overall thoughts of this show. This is really a perfect time to, to talk about Juon. Like my brain works differently when it comes to horror. I think horror can be used as this storytelling tool to discuss things that are relevant today. The fact that Juon Origins came out at these times during the pandemic, I think we can connect it to the fact that there is a virus spreading all over the world, right? Juon literally means a cursed grudge. If I'm correct, to those who are uninitiated, the way it works is a tragedy of such profound magnitude happened that it birthed a curse and that curse basically affects everyone who comes into the house. It feels like relevant and timely if you think of it that way. What you said about the concept of this franchise is mostly it delves on the themes of the violence inflicted by men to women and children which can be still be seen timely though it's not us the most progressive theme per se of our generation this series is very sensitive there are some scenes that portrays violence against children there are rape scenes and one can make an argument that why are we seeing these themes played over again but that is the central concept of Juon. Watching the series, the impression that it gave me is that it's not just whoever directly contacts on the house. It can also be passed on. We have some characters here that were experiencing apparitions too, which they have nothing to do with the house. I think that's an evolving concept that this show really explored up until now. This has only six episodes and these are all 30 minutes, so very watchable. And I am really surprised and quite pleased, to be honest, that there are just few jump scares here because a lot of people nowadays they often mistake jump scares and those images of grotesque horror lingering on your screens as the measure for how scary the movie is this one really capitalizes on building the sense of dread this unsettling tone that increasingly goes as we progress into this episode so that is the one positive thing that i can think right off the bat yeah i feel like japanese horror cinema has been at the forefront of that kind of terror right some people might even say that the build-up is much scarier than the shots or the actual scare we've seen that time and time again not just with takashi shimitsu's work who was the person who created Ju on the franchise not just his work but also kiyoshi kurosawa's work also sion sono's work there's a whole pantheon of, of japanese horror cinema which also sprawls out as a seminal work because its influence can be felt all throughout the world in the realm of netflix originals you can even liken it to the way mike flanagan mounts his scares set piece says with Haunting of Hill House obviously. I agree with you that there isn't a lot of jump scares or like the Western or like I guess you can say also Filipino audiences expect to be scarce but there are a lot of disturbing imagery and disturbing scenes i think to a fault because sometimes it just feels like the series is just yeah. downright ugly i can mean it in both a positive and a negative because sometimes i feel like it's just being ugly for ugliness sake it doesn't really put weight to the violence or put weight to the message the entire message of the story i don't think that it does a great job of using the innate brutality of its premise i think what's distinct with juon and Japanese horror cinema in general. It's just the tone and the, how it looks, how it sounds, everything is so crisp. You can almost feel, taste, and like hear everything that's happening on screen. That's why it's more effective. Something beyond your control is going to happen and you, you can't do anything about it. Speaking of that level of dread that they have maintained here, I think this show takes a non-conventional path, a non-linear storytelling approach, which might be confusing for some. So we've seen Several characters are closest to main protagonist. I think his name is Yasuo. He's an author who is fascinated to the paranormal stuff. We see him first on the first episode, then he 
pops in a few scenes for the second to third episodes then towards the end he's back so i'm thinking that audiences might find that they're lacking of a solid footing of a main character to hold on to since these are just six episodes what i felt lacking however is the character drama for me to be able to resonate with them i think i needed to see them fleshed out especially for someone who's not invested to the juon franchise that part of non-linear approach i think the director went for that way because it's effective in terms of developing that level of mystery so many questions pop in your head and by the end one can feel that there's a sense of frustration and an emptiness you feel once you realize that those questions are not necessarily answers a lot of questions were left hanging by the end of the first season and for me I find it hard to completely grade this season because I need to know first to have a hint of which path they're taking on to. Yeah, it's interesting that you're touching on the structure because one of the main criticisms that Juon movies have is obviously that the narrative is told in a non-linear fashion. I think it worked in the first film, strictly on the first film only. You mentioned something about mystery earlier and that mystery I think has dissipated on the third, fourth movie. You already know that there's a cursed house. There's a curse that sprawls out like a virus. Me personally going into this, I no longer have a mystery to like uncover. I already know how it's supposed to, to work. And on that note, the series title is called Juon Origins and it promises to basically give me a roadmap back to the origins of the curse. I think the series didn't really do a good job of tracing back how did it happen. It, it didn't even show us the 1950s origins that it basically told us via exposition only. <laughs> because the Western remakes also touched on this a little bit and they recontextualized the movies but they stuck with the structure to keep it a Juon movie because what makes Juon is not really the curse because that is fairly common in, in haunted houses and like um, supernatural thrillers. What's distinct about it is its insistence on making the narrative needlessly disjointed. It could have told the story in a linear fashion and it would be the same story. It wants to actively make you feel confused and make the plot convoluted. I don't know to what end. The first movie worked for me. We don't know anything about it yet. It's a legitimate mystery and when that movie ended as you mentioned you're left with even more questions but coming into this movie i think the structure i think it's it's expected but i had hoped that they played more into it obviously they introduced the idea of metaphysics into it because it's a supernatural movie and it's something that they touched on in the third movie basically people who are touched or like struck by the curse they're able to communicate in some way with one another and they're bound this by time and space obviously it's a thing here and i like that they're touching on those different mechanics that the entire series which is i'm shocked that it's 13 movies already including the remakes what you said about the origins i felt like and you have to correct me if i'm wrong on this i felt like they glossed over what happened on the two original supernatural entities we have, Kayako and Toshiko. I was thinking heading into this series that we're going to finally learn the story about them because they're always just mentioned in passing. And what you've said about creating this unnecessary confusion, the non-linear timeline could have really worked for me, but it is by episode six, I guess, where it becomes a make or break, where they were able to make these plot lines cohesive or make the loose ends tie together. and. I felt that they were just willed holding a lot of information for season two, but just in general, the whole season one feels like an unfinished yeah. arc for me. There's something that they did here about recalling on the flashbacks using black and white cinematography. Then also, there are some events in episode five where the past and the present intermingles. It seems like the present is trying to affect what's happening on the past. Initially, you're gonna be thinking if, if these people in the past are just some lost souls looking for justice or there really is some sci-fi concept that's been brewing. Just to give context in the original, uh, they didn't use black and white, so this is this is something that new that Juan Origins did. Takashi Shimizu didn't. I don't think they he had a hand in this, but I have to fact check that because it feels like a different beast unto itself, a beast that I don't see myself mingling with the same way that I 
at least had an okay to good time with the original Juwan movies. But the black and white cinematography, I think, is effective. It is technically a flashback, but it's more of the house's way or the curse's way to show you what unfolded in this house. It's, it's a clever way of the style. The past and the present basically intermingle with, with one another, and that's a nice way of establishing that. I feel like the series, they almost want to, <laughs> to retcon. That's the impression that I'm getting, actually. They have been swapped with characters that are... You can basically say that there are fill-ins to, to the original. To everyone who's not watched um, the original, Kayak is the ghost that you've seen like crawling downstairs with her body all contorted and stuff. And then Toshio is the kid who basically screams using a cat voice. They are also here in spirit. <laughs> Pun intended. They're also here, but different characters. I felt like the mantra of the writers while doing this season, they want to show that its audience that you think you know how the story unfolds, but no, this is how really the story really started. And in a way, it feels like a retcon, which I don't necessarily like because they're scrapping away years worth of Juon mythology, which kind of confuses the audience. The best storyline I have here that I really like, the story arc still can be shallow, but just because the actress really did a great job. The story of Kiyomi, the high school student, she's from a troubled family and that experience she had with that house is able to transform her that really manifested in her life rippled to her future decisions even affecting her future husband and her child yeah i agree but, I but think, what do you um, think Yomi's arc is the one that they should have focused on fleshing out more because i think there's more to her character than just being the troubled kid who leading a troubled life i wish they showed more of the lighter side of her life. For you to be able to write a three-dimensional character, I feel like you need to show different sides of the character and I feel like we've just seen Kiyomi being beat down. My overall thoughts for a non ju on franchise fan, I felt like this series with its six episodes, it's really bingeable. This one has a good pacing, though not necessarily the way it's structured would lead you to more profound understanding about the lore of the ju on I don't necessarily root for all the characters, save for Kiyomi, like there's an actress here. We don't really know much about her aside from her being an actress. I just like the execution here that it's not reliant on jump scares. It's more on sustaining that level of dread and unsettling tone that I find this series having the potential to do more on a second season. But for now, I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5. That however might increase or decrease depending on the second season. So, how about you, Armando? I don't want to call myself the biggest Juwon horror fan, but I think I get what it's trying to say. For a proper prequel to be successful, I feel like the filmmaker should be at least aligned or in tune with what the Juwon movies were trying to do. This series just didn't really stick the landing for me in terms of characterization. The characters here are strictly one-dimensional. You don't really know about anything about them. Structure-wise, I don't have anything bad to say about it except that I wish they justified it more. In terms of its dread, each episode there's always one penultimate moment of complete terror that you can pinpoint. So that's a positive. I feel like the filmmakers have a good handle on making horror. It's just that I don't feel like they have stuck the landing in terms of keeping this Jew on, supposedly Jew on proper prequel, a Jew on proper prequel. The first few um, Jew on movies, they're quite unique brand of horror that I think influenced many horror films after them. They deserve it a better prequel than what we have currently. So in on that note, I want to rate this series uh, by Netflix 2 out of 5 stars. That's it guys for our review of Juo The Origins. Arman, thank you so much for joining me here. Where can they find you? Yeah, just follow me on Twitter. It's Arman DC. Our website is unreal.ph. We have a movie club on Facebook. It's a private uh, Facebook group where you can hang out with other cinephiles as well. Guys, how about you? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Do you agree or disagree with our thoughts? As always, if you enjoy watching this video, please give us a like and consider subscribing to our channel for more discussions about film and TV. Till then guys, see you on the next one. Yay, Bye! Thank you!